Hey everyone, welcome back to Insightful Jan. This week, I've been diving deep into some fascinating comic book titles, both old and new. So, grab your favorite snack, get comfy, and let's talk about the comics I've read and what makes each one stand out. Let's kick things off with Rook. Exodus Issues 1 and 2. Wow, what a start to this series. In Issue 1, we're thrust into a dystopian world where survival is a daily struggle. We follow Rook, a tough survivor with a mysterious past, navigating a post-apocalyptic city in search of a rumored safe haven called Exodus. The world building here is top-notch, and the cliffhanger at the end of the issue left me eagerly turning the pages to the next. Issue 2 dives deeper into Rook's backstory with some well-placed flashbacks, giving us more insight into her motivations. New characters are introduced, adding layers to the plot and making the narrative even richer. The art continues to impress with detailed illustrations and a moody color palette that perfectly captures the bleak yet beautiful world. Next up, Helverine, Issue 1 by Benjamin Percy. This one is an intense mix of horror and action, featuring Wolverine in a hellish dimension. The story kicks off with Logan encountering a powerful demonic entity and being dragged into hell. The narrative explores Logan's inner demons while he battles through nightmarish creatures to find a way back to the mortal world. The art is phenomenal, with vivid, grotesque details that bring hell to life in a truly haunting way. Percy's writing captures Logan's relentless and gritty nature perfectly, making this a must-read for fans of Wolverine and supernatural horror. Now, let's talk about Ultimate Spider-Man 2024, Issue 5, by Jonathan Hickman. This issue focuses on Harry Osborn's transformation into the Green Goblin. It's filled with rich backstory and intricate plot twists. We see Harry's last conversation with his father, his rise to power in Oscorp, and his ultimate transformation. While the pacing is slower than I'd prefer, the depth of character development and the world-building are outstanding. David Messina's artwork, combined with Matthew Wilson's colors, brings a vibrant and dramatic visual experience that elevates Hickman's storytelling. I Heart Skullcrusher Issue 3 by Josie Campbell continues to be a wild ride. This series is a chaotic blend of shonen anime, Scott Pilgrim, and post-apocalyptic madness. In this issue, Trini's team adds a new member, David the Mutant Bearman leading to hilarious and absurd moments as they prepare for their next big match. The characters are quirky, the dialogue is witty, and the art by Alessio Zano is vibrant and energetic. This series is pure fun and doesn't take itself too seriously, making it a delightful read. On a darker note, Death Ratioed by Mark Russell is a satirical one-shot that explores a future where social media controls every aspect of life. Set in Boston 2046, this dystopian tale is both absurd and terrifying. The protagonist wakes up from a coma to find a world where your social standing can literally mean life or death. Russell's writing is sharp and humorous, while Lacey's artwork vividly brings this disturbing world to life. It's a thought-provoking read that makes you laugh and think about the current state of social media. Gromit's issue one by Rick Reminder and Brian Posehn is a nostalgic trip back to the 80s, centered around skateboarding culture. The story follows Rick, a new kid in town, as he navigates the world of skateboarding and makes new friends. The characters are relatable, and Brett Parsons' artwork captures the energetic and chaotic essence of the 80s perfectly. It's a heartfelt, fun read that brings back memories of simpler times. Next, Black Panther, Blood Hunt, Issue 1 by Cheryl Lynn Eaton takes Chala on a dark journey after being turned into a vampire by Blade. The issue blends action, horror, and deep internal conflict as Chala battles both the Blood Coven and his new vampiric nature. Farid Karami's art is detailed and atmospheric, perfectly capturing the eerie and intense vibe of the story. It's a gripping start to a series that promises to be both thrilling and emotionally resonant. Let's continue with Midnight Suns, Blood Hunt No. 1. Written by Brian Hill with art by German Peralta, this issue is a solid introduction to the team and their new mission. The story starts with Blade taking a dark turn, which sets a thrilling tone for the series. Tulip seeks Danny Ketch's help to uncover what's wrong with Blade, 
leading to explosive action scenes and mystical confrontations. The art is detailed, and the colors add a vibrant touch to the night scenes, making it a visually engaging read. While the issue effectively reintroduces the Midnight Suns and their dynamics, it spends a lot of time on introductions and side quests, which can feel a bit disconnected. However, it's still a great read for both new and longtime fans of the Midnight Suns. Next, we have Rat City No. 1 by Erica Schultz, with art by Zay Carlos. Set in a futuristic expansion of the Spawn universe, this issue introduces us to Peter Cairn, a former soldier navigating his new life in the dangerous Rat City. The combination of Schultz's storytelling and Carlos's dynamic artwork makes this a compelling start to the series. The detailed character designs and vibrant colors bring the gritty, neon-lit world of Rat City to life. Peter's journey as a newly transformed Hellspawn is both thrilling and emotionally resonant, grounding the supernatural elements in real-world issues like the treatment of veterans. It's a must-read for fans of the Spawn universe. Under York No. 1, by Sylvain Runberg and Mirka Andolfo, is an impressive blend of urban fantasy and horror. Set beneath New York City, the story follows Allison Walker, an artist who gets entangled with a group of magical clans protecting humanity from dark forces. The atmospheric artwork by Andolfo captures both the beauty and horror of this hidden world, making it a visually captivating red. The grounded, ritualistic approach to magic adds a unique touch to the urban fantasy genre, and Allison's journey promises to be an exciting adventure. It's a strong start to a promising miniseries. Now, let's talk about Monolith No. 1 by Sean Lewis, with art by Valerio John Giordano. Set in a futuristic space prison within the Spawn universe, this issue is a visual masterpiece. Gian Giordano's detailed artwork, combined with Ulises Ariola's vibrant colors, creates a stunning backdrop for Monolith's journey. The story is gripping, exploring themes of redemption and humanity in a dark, brutal world. Monolith's internal conflict and the intense action scenes make this a standout addition to the Spawn universe. It's a must-read for fans of dark, action-packed comics. Oz, Fall of the Emerald City No. 1, by David Wall, takes a dramatic turn in the beloved world of Oz. The story begins with chaos as the fallen of Oz and Earth return, causing fear and conflict. The artwork is stunning, especially the scenes involving magical battles. This issue blends classic elements of Oz with new, darker themes, making it a compelling read for both new and longtime fans. The action sequences and character development are highlights, setting the stage for an epic tale in the land of Oz. 7174 AD No. 1 by T.P. Louise and Ashley Wood is a unique and surreal experience. This debut issue challenges traditional storytelling, offering a blend of experimental art and unconventional narrative. The artwork by Wood is mesmerizing, with vibrant, hyperactive illustrations that draw you into a futuristic world of street racing and surreal adventures. While the abstract nature of the stories might be confusing for some, it's a visually and intellectually stimulating read for fans of avant-garde and experimental comics. The Six Fingers No. 1 by Dan Waters and Sumit Kumar introduces Johannes Vale, an archaeology student whose life spirals out of control after a brutal murder. The narrative is deeply introspective, exploring Johannes' internal and external battles. Kumar's artwork perfectly complements the dark and introspective tone, creating a visually immersive experience. The issue's pacing and world-building might feel disjointed at times, but the character development and atmospheric art make it a compelling read. The One Hand by Ram V and Lawrence Campbell is a gripping noir detective series. Detective Ari Nasser's pursuit of the one-hand killer is both thrilling and emotionally engaging. The atmospheric art by Campbell, combined with Lee Lowridge's moody colors, creates a classic noir setting that enhances the story's tension. The intersecting narrative with the Six Fingers adds depth to the story, making both series essential reads for fans of noir mysteries and psychological thrillers. Next up, we have Once Upon a Time at the End of the World by Jason Aaron a captivating comic series that spans multiple story arcs, exploring themes of love, survival, and resilience in a post-apocalyptic world. Let's dive into an in-depth summary of issues 1 through 15. Issues 1 to 5, titled Love in the Wasteland, 
Introduce us to Maceo and Mezii, two very different individuals brought together in a devastated world. Maceo is a cheerful scavenger, and Mezii is a solitary warrior. Their initial mistrust slowly evolves into a budding friendship and partnership as they navigate dangerous terrains and face deadly threats like the Ravagers, a ruthless gang. Their relationship deepens through shared experiences and emotional connections, making this arc a heartwarming yet thrilling read. In issues 6 to 10, The Tower in the Sea, the journey continues as Maceo and Mezi set off towards a rumored safe haven. Along the way, they face new challenges, including deadly sandstorms and desert pirates. They meet a group of survivors led by the enigmatic Econ, which adds tension and conflict. The arc culminates in a major confrontation with the Ravagers and a shocking betrayal at the tower, leaving their fate uncertain. The action-packed sequences and deepening character dynamics keep readers on the edge of their seats. The final arc, issues 11 to 15, not even if you're the last person on Earth, sees Maceo and Mezi separated and struggling to survive on their own. The narrative shifts focus between their individual trials and their longing to reunite. Maceo's escape from the Ravagers and Mezi's integration into a new community are highlights of this arc. The tension builds as they head towards a rumored utopia, facing intense battles and emotional confrontations. The series concludes with a bittersweet ending, reflecting on their journey, their enduring love, and their hope for the future. Once Upon a Time at the End of the World combines emotional depth with gripping action and beautiful artwork, making it a standout series in the post-apocalyptic genre. The central themes of love and survival, resilience and hope, and the consequences of environmental catastrophe are masterfully woven throughout the narrative. Jason Aaron's storytelling, coupled with the detailed and expressive artwork, creates a rich and engaging story that resonates deeply with readers. This series is a must-read for fans of post-apocalyptic tales and those who appreciate complex character development and thematic depth. Each issue draws you further into Maceo and Mezi's world, making you root for their survival and their love. I highly recommend picking up Once Upon a Time at the End of the World if you're looking for a compelling and thought-provoking comic series. And that's a wrap on this week's comic book reviews. Each of these titles offers something unique, from supernatural adventures to gripping noir mysteries and heartfelt post-apocalyptic journeys. If you've read any of these or have recommendations, drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more comic book insights. Until next time, keep reading and stay awesome.